Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland and please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Yes. You might hear a little bit of a buzzing. It's that light. That light is a little bit buzzy. That one's spectacularly buzzy. So, this is number 1078, I think. 1078. Without looking at my laptop, I can't tell you exactly. Can't use, yeah. So, it's. There's too much equipment on this desk for me to start looking at the laptop. Uh, when I when I'm when I don't when I don't video, and I'm just using this old microphone, it's a little bit easier because I can play around with stuff. But not so much with the with the camera, no. So I hope you're well. Hope everything's fine. Uh, <laughs> I did one of these yesterday. I don't know if I'm gonna. I'm not. There's this whole thing about should I make videos? Should I make videos of the let me board you to sleep recordings podcasts? Should I do that or shouldn't I do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I started thinking, yeah, maybe, maybe I should. Maybe just do it anyway. How? Yeah, yeah. You know. Mm. Just, just do it anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm making, I'm making the podcast. So I'm doing the verbal aspect of it. So talking into a camera is, I mean, it's what I spent over a decade doing previously to focusing mainly on my podcasts. It's how I started off on YouTube. Not how I started off, and I started off as a baby. And there was no internet back then. <sighs> no internet. I wish there was. I'll tell you something. If there'd have been internet when I was born, I reckon I'd be very wealthy. Because for some reason, not that I'm wealthy now, so that probably wouldn't count, but I took to the internet quite easily, quite quickly, quite enthusiastically. Even though I was nearly 30 when the internet kind of really took hold. Um, it was late, 80, late 80s, late 90s when uh, I really probably... I started, I started really getting involved in the internet in 2000. When I started making videos are not videos <laughs> websites so was it 2000 yeah I think it was 2000s yeah two, new, 2000 so yeah I think I'd have grown into it if I'd have like grown up with it but then maybe I'd, I wouldn't have liked it if it was it wouldn't have been a novelty it would have just been oh it's that. It's it's just there. Meh. But because it was so different from anything that I'd ever done or seen or experienced before, I just found it fascinating. And then, as I got older, I was already old then, but as I, as I creamed in age, as I became flakier, I, I, uh, as I deteriorated mentally, I, I started to not so much be interested in website building, sort of like with the HTML code, and I think it used to be HTM, then it became HTML, and then of course there's all the different Python and all the different codes that I got no idea how to do. But I used to be able to do HTML to an intermediate, 
intermediately satisfactory um, point. Couldn't think what word to end that with. Condition? It's not really a condition, is it? Coding. So that there will be backgrounds in the in the guard, and hopefully you won't hear too much of it. I'll probably hear more than you do. But uh, Flemmy out there, she's uh, she you hear her. Um, I was hoping that the rain would prevent people from going in the garden, but it doesn't seem to be. It's amazing how people can stand that close to each other and still be shouting. Like, they can't just have a normal conversation. It's like they're literally shouting. And you'd think they're shouting. They must be like 100, 200 yards away, but they're not. They're like literally maybe three, four foot away. I <laughs> it's kind of okay that's two hands making weird noises but you know that's well to be fair this would probably make more sense that made sense to me a rat don't <laughs> that outside that's because I can't hear it all I can hear is mumbles. I can't hear the actual words being said. I can just hear shouts. Shouty language. <laughs> so, if that is too nice, I mean, I, sh I suppose I could close the window. But the problem with closing the window is they can hear me close the window. They can see. So I've got no neck curtains up, you see. I ripped them down because they, well, I didn't so much rip the neck curtains down as I touched them and they just fell apart because I've been up there for nine years. Yeah, it kind of disintegrated. So, kind of, yeah. I wonder why people have to talk so, why, why do people go in the garden to have big, long, loud conversations? What do you reckon that is? <laughs> wonder why that is. I don't know. I suppose that's one of those uh, council estate enigmas, probably. Something that's never going to be discovered. Maybe uh, one day the the, the secret will be revealed uh, at the bottom of a the Dead Sea or something. I don't know. They'll dig it up like underneath a pharaoh's tomb. It's like, oh, that's why they talk so loudly when they're only inches away. It's a it's a specific communication for people living living on council estates. Now I live on a council estate. I don't talk like that, but maybe I do. Maybe I do, and I don't realise it. Just make sure that I'm recording. Blimey. me. Maybe I do do that, and I don't. Maybe. Mind you, I do have a lot of people ask me to repeat myself. Maybe I talk too quietly for humans. Perhaps that's the human level that I should be talking at. But I wasn't aware of it before. No one told me. They just say, what would you say? What, what, uh, 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 uh. Plus I spent most of my life around people that weren't really listening to me anyway. But I seem to get that a little bit. I seem to get a little sense that that's what's happening. So I'm like, and they're not actually communicating they're just uh be just pooing out their mind and then that person poos out their thoughts and that person poos out their thoughts but it's not necessary they just happen to be doing it in the same location i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong 
Um, so I did... YouTube has started to grow a little bit for some reason. I don't know why. <coughs> Sorry, that's all I can hear. I hope you can't hear it. If you can hear it, I apologise. But that's no different from having Vinny on the floor eating a bone. I mean, that slightly... The annoyance levels are, you know, miles apart. But, you know... Uh, he will make noise when I make these recordings. It's just, it's quite hard to close the window because I do have the heating on because it's winter. Well, still kind of winter. But with those lights, it makes it very warm in here. We'll turn the heating off. Yeah, all right, okay. Well, even if the heating are off, the light's shining right in my face, making me look like a bald pink football I don't know what do I look like I don't know what I look like I look human a bit human I don't know maybe that wasn't an invitation to send in comments about what I look like I know what I look like I have eyes thank you very much I remember my nan when she had laser surgery on her eyes uh, she as opposed to her scales uh, on her eyes, she had laser surgery, and it was kind of sad what she said. Um, she said, uh, well, first of all, she started saying she could see the skid marks in my underpants, because she used to do my washing sometimes, like, before, she never noticed it. It's like, well, we just have to, why do you know? First of all, why have you got to notice it now? Secondly... Why have you got to mention it at dinner? In front of my girlfriend. She thinks I'm clean. And she, she didn't say, she basically she said, she had the eye surgery. I think she had to have one at a time because otherwise you can't see. You end up banging into things. I mean, you literally can't have both eyes done at the same time. I guess unless you've got someone to look after you and, um, but still, you know, and she said the one thing she noticed is, because she'd always wore glasses. My old, the whole time I'd known her, I've seen pictures of her from oh, the seventies, uh, and she she wore glasses. So she's always, and I've worn glasses probably since I was. I've been wearing glasses all the time since about two thousand and thirteen. So yeah, over ten years. Over three years. What do you mean over three years? That's 11 years. Yeah, 11 years is over three years. Isn't it? I'm right. Me, me, me. So I thought, uh, yeah, she said, I can't believe how old I look. And I said, I've been telling you that for years, Nan. You look old. You are old. And she said, I thought you were just joking. I said, no, no, you really do look old. <laughs> Now give me some more meatloaf. She said, what, the food or the album? <laughs> that was that little meatloaf joke. Those are the days when people used to have meatloaf for food instead of um, basically only eating it during poverty. I hated meatloaf. I liked it. I like meatloaf. It's one of those things, right? There's certain things that I don't like. But if it's burnt, like really tough and chewy and like crispy, I'll eat it. One is meatloaf. Make that crispy as, bro, yeah, I'd eat it. It's like, oh, this is nice. Because the taste of meatloaf is nice. It's just I didn't like the texture, especially if it was soggy and like, bleh. it's just, I don't know. I was going to say like sucking on a witch's tip, but probably not a good I did, but just like, just, you know, it's, I mean, like being breastfed by a sumo wrestler, just, it wouldn't, wouldn't seem right, I've got a thing about being breastfed right now, so I'll move on, how do you get from meatloaf to being breastfed, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how I get from anywhere to anywhere, to be honest with you, 
apart from when I'm in a taxi or train. Even then, I'm not always sure. Have you ever fallen asleep on public transport and really not known where you were? I remember I'd, I fell... I, was, I had this job in a bakery and I would be so tired coming home and I'd be on the bus and I, would, I literally I'd fall asleep as soon as I got on the bus. It was from Walthamstow to Leighton. So it wasn't a long journey, probably about 25 minutes or something. It wasn't a long journey, but it was a very busy journey. A lot of people, I mean a lot. And I had to get off at outside the Thatched House pub, which is in Leighton. It's Stratford and Leighton. It's Leighton High Road, but it's Stratford. It's kind of like the very kind of mixed together, really. So I, I needed to get off outside the Thatched House because I think the bus was then turning left or right. I don't know. But that's what I would do. And quite often I'd, I'd go to the shops first before going home. Uh, and it was a little bit of a walk to get home as well from there. But only like 20 minutes. But I remember once I fell asleep. I didn't know I'd fallen asleep because I was that tired. Because when you're really tired, you don't know you've fallen asleep. There's no... That's the thing about sleeping. And something I've been trying to kind of pass on... Um, a little bit with sleeping and falling asleep is not something that you do it's something that just happens and the only way really that you you kind of allow it to happen by giving just providing the circumstances guys I think Fleming might be going I don't know can't see. But it was, um, what's that? Oh, yeah. So I was on the bus and I was just waiting for, yeah, I got on the bus heading towards the where I lived, you know, the thatched house, and then I'd walk. I didn't realize I'd fallen asleep and I woke up. Luckily, it wasn't at my stop. It was earlier in the stop. So it wasn't even, to be fair, it wasn't even that far from where I'd got on. But I'd fallen asleep. And it was like the other end of Walthamstow. Like literally just, probably the, the, pit, the bit that leaves Walthamstow. Then heads towards Leighton. Like you know where the area I'm talking about. You might do. I mean, I don't know what what lane is that. Was it Warmstow Lane? Was it um, late Leighton? I don't know. Anyway, I woke up and I was leaning against the window. So I was on the left hand side of the bus, sitting against the window, and I and I woke up, and I looked down, and just the bus stopped at a bus stop, which they do tend to do, uh, and. I think the jolt of the bus must have woken me up. And I looked down and there's all these people. I mean, a lot, lot, lot of people. A lot of people. Good, like, 50, 60 people. And they're probably waiting for different buses. But there's a lot of people all sort of crowded together. You get a lot of crowds. You get a lot of people crowded together in London. Um, I mean, some people aren't that bothered about... Um, distance you know uh personal space not everyone's that concerned about personal space and i was i've always been like i don't really want people too close but some people just like they enjoy being really close to each other like almost not inside each other that that'd be wrong but you know kind of really not stuck together because that would like well how do they get stuck together but they they like to be close, and I, I've never really wanted, to, never enjoyed being too close to people. I quite like to have a little bit of a distance, and I think part of that is my eyesight is I can't focus on someone if they're too close. 
and that's a bit better in the fit. But they haven't got to be like a mile away because I just can't. Not only can I not focus, I can't see them. But I'm not saying that the only way I want to communicate is with binoculars and a walkie-talkie. That goes back a while, isn't it? I mean, why don't they just say phone? Why do they say walkie-talkie? It's not the 80s. It's not the Goonies, you know. We're not in the Goonies world. The Goonies. Anyway, I... I, 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 I... Oh, yeah, so I'm on the bus. I'm on the bus. But what I do try and say is, like, because falling asleep naturally is... If the conditions are there, like there was a time years ago and when I used to try and fall asleep, like literally I've got to get to sleep, I've got to be up at six in the morning, it's now 11.30 in the evening, ooh, no, I'd be counting the hours of how long I'd got before I had to get up. And I'd always fall asleep eventually, but it wasn't enjoyable, the process, because I was trying to force it. And in life, you can't really force much. You can't force yourself to be hungry. You can't you force yourself to, to love someone. You can't force yourself to be attracted to someone. You can't force, can't force yourself to enjoy um, an album, a music. You can't, it's like you can't force yourself to just to do the things that are, are natural. So things are natural. You like what you like, isn't it? You can experience new things, and then you know, which is how we learn to like new things, isn't it? But we like what we like, and then also what we like sometimes changes, and we like different things, and maybe we stop liking something that we used to like. Hence divorce. So I. You don't, you can't force sleep. You can't force relaxation. And it took me a long time to realize that, like a real long time. And once I realized it, and once, then I had to go a bit further to start to no longer go to bed to go to sleep even though that was why I was going to bed you know it's kind of okay that's the reason to go to bed but I started to think of laying down on the bed as an opportunity to just relax not try to relax not planning to relax just relax uh, an opportunity to just but when you lay down or sit in a chair, reclined or whatever, comfortable chair, if you close your eyes, you're cutting out a lot of the a lot of the stuff that's coming into your brain. A lot of visual stuff. Well, all the visual stuff really. I know you've got your internal visual imagination and things like that, but and even with your even with your eyes shut, you can if you've got lights on, you can still see the light for your for your eyelids unless you're um a rhinoceros. I think they've got quite thick elephants as well, they've got quite thick eyelids. But I'm surprised. I imagine not too many elephants are listening to this. I've got a handful. I'm not bragging, I'm not, I've got I've got a handful. I have I mean I've got a handful of um Elephants. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Then what I did, I started thinking, right? I started thinking, I'm just going to lie down. I'm just going to lie down on the bed. And have no expectations. I don't care really about anything. I'm just going to lie down get comfortable, allow myself to get comfortable and just appreciate how nice it feels to close my eyes. How nice it feels to to give my legs a rest. 
I mean, in all fairness, my legs do get quite a lot of rest, but, you know, it's, it's, that's why it's nice. You know that feeling when you've been, I don't know, maybe you've been shopping, you've been walking a lot, and, you, and you're walking home and you've got bags of shopping and stuff, and then you, you finally get in your home and you put the bags down, and there's, that's your first bit of relief. I mean, the second bit of relief probably is just getting indoors, and then everything you do from then onwards is a little bit more relief, a bit more, a bit more relaxing. You know, maybe you take your coat off, or you take your shoes off, um, take your chastity belt off, what, you know, whatever your your metal helmet, whatever you've you've got, you know, your suit of armor, whatever you're wearing, you take that off, uh, your parachute, and then. When you actually sit down, that even young people have that old, because there's a certain, certain thing that old people, and I'm to class myself like as I got older, it's like, <sighs> as I sit down in a chair. Now, even young people do that when they've been walking around a lot. You know, when it's like a little bit too much, you just need to just sit down. And is that, it's almost like a little bit of ecstasy, like, ah. it's so nice to just take the weight off your feet and relax. And It's that kind of feeling, really, that I'm talking about when I lay down in bed. It's it's an opportunity to, first of all, close my eyes. I'll have the light off, so there's no light coming into my eyelids. Um, there's probably not going to be a lot of audio going on. But even if there is, I've noticed that it doesn't bother me. I don't need it to be completely quiet all the time when I'm lying down. I just, when I'm in bed, I don't. There was a time when I felt I did, but I don't now. There was a time when I I felt I needed to have really thick curtains blacking out the room so there was no light whatsoever. I don't feel that way anymore. I don't, you know, that's 30 odd years ago and now I'm pretty chilled out, just, or should I say, I'm pretty chill. I saw an advert, they said that. It was, an, it was a car insurance advert. We help you feel chill. What? Help you feel chill? And now, having a mental illness is mental health. Well, I'm bipolar, so it's it's not mental health. It's mental health issues. It's mental, it's mental illness. It's not being bipolar. It's not mental health. Mental health is when you're fine, when you're feeling good, when you're balanced, when you're healthy, happy, and all that stuff. That's mental health. Physical health. Uh, let's wait a minute. Physical health. Yeah, it's 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 physical health and then physical illness. It's they're not the same thing. I got mental health. Well, good for you. I haven't. I have to take medication every day for the rest of my life. Oh, 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 oh. Instable, I tell you, instable. mental it's it went from being mental health to it was just like started off people were doing it saying it by accident like mental health issues and they just like started and sometimes they say mental health and they forget to say the word issues mental health condition 
whatever. And then the last word just seemed to drop off altogether. And now I'm hearing professionals, a professional. I'm talking, should I repeat that? An actual professional medical person used the term mental health. If you've got mental health, if you've got mental health, you're doing well. Mental health issues, mental health illness, mental mental illness. You know, it's like, no. I'm feeling great. I need help. It's weird. It's, I don't know. And I'm coming from a, a perspective of being one of them. I'm one of them. No. You're one of them? Yes, I'm one of them. <gasps> it's not self-diagnosed either, by the way. If I was going to self-diagnose myself, it'd be as a super stud. That's why I would self-diagnose myself. As a genius, super stud. Um, king of the world. That would be my self-diagnosis. I wouldn't diagnose myself as uh, being having a mental mental health. You got mental health? Yeah. No. I mean, some people are like, "Oh, that's offensive." It's not offensive at all. Mm. Not offensive. It's just factual. It's not the right term. It's the right term now. Yeah, okay, maybe it's just going to be the correct term, but it's like, well, but it doesn't actually make sense. If you say that someone's got mental health, it means that they're healthy. What's next? Someone's full up. Does that mean they're hungry? Someone's tired. They're tired. So it means they want to go for a run. Someone's wide awake. means they need a nap. I mean, what? We're we just going to be reversing everything. It's weird, though, because... I remember I had a friend years ago. This isn't... Not that long ago, but 2004. Around the summertime. We'll probably... Spring, springtime, and I went into work, and it was in this uh, gift shop, Evolution. It was a Buddhist charity, and I have a drink of water. It was, yeah, it was the spring 2004, and I, what did I do? I did something, I can't remember. Oh yeah, I went into work with, just went to work anyway, just dressed. Decided to get dressed. I thought I gave everyone a treat, a rest from my nakedness. And one of my colleagues said, Oh, Jason, that's a very gay shirt. I'm not sure if he wobbled his head like that, but um, those listening to the podcast about the video, you're missing out on some absolute gold. Because right then, when I, when I said, What's a very gay shirt? Hmm, like that. I actually wobbled my head, which made it, it just added probably, I'd say at least 70% of the impact of what I said. Uh, hearing it without the nodding of the head, I don't think did it justice. Um, I'm not, you know, obviously I'm, I'm pleased you're listening. Uh, brilliant, thank you. I mean, at least four people a day listen to me. It's good. But it's just... 
you missed out on that. It was, I would say so far it's a highlight of the last 18 years of doing this. That was probably the highlight of the whole, the whole little adventure of making videos and podcasts. But anyway, he said, oh, that's a very gay shirt, very gay shirt. And I said, I mean, he was blimey, yeah, he was, was he 50? He was 50 then, so he's, blimey, he's probably nearly 70 now, wow. I haven't seen him in a long time. But he's, it's like, you do realise that the term gay that you're using it because I understood what he meant but he was using it in the old fashioned term of gay being jolly and happy and bright and colourful and whatever and like you're not that old like if he was in his hundreds if he was 120 and he'd come out with that. So, okay, fair enough, because in the 50s, the 40s and 50s, they used the term gay. But not in 2004. Never, he's the only person ever in 2004 to use the word gay in a way, in a like flamboyant, colourful, joyous t shirt or shirt, whatever I was wearing. And I said, you got it wrong. And you know when someone proves you right, when they 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 kind of in in an instant they prove you wrong, like they just really mess with your theory. He did that because he kissed me. <laughs> no, he didn't. Um, I got it right, mate. <coughs> that was again those listening. Um, you you didn't get to see my romantic expression of kissing. <laughs> see you're missing a lot I mean I you know I do there's at least um, three people listen to my podcasts and, and I just Bob Steve and Shirley I think hi everyone I just uh, you know sometimes a video <laughs> the video <laughs> the video element really helps I don't know what I'm talking about and I just said to him, look, you're using it wrong. It's like no one uses that word in in that that way anymore. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, when you, we're in a different century, basically. Literally, we're in a different century. Literally, yeah. And I said, a uh, hundred years ago they would have used that term and it wouldn't have been offensive. No one would have took offence to you saying that to them. He said, did you take offence? I said, no, I don't took the took offence because I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm everything friendly, I am. I'm, I ain't got no issues with people, with any groups of people. Don't, I'm not interested, I don't care. And he said, that's not why I asked you. I said, yeah, I'm just just telling you, you, because sometimes when I get serious, I like to go, because then they know. If someone does that, you know that they're actually, first of all, you've got their full attention, they've got your full attention then, and you mean what you're saying. So I said, look, I'm telling you that I, I, don't have an issue with any group of people. I'm really not. It's not about that. It's just. It's just a bit weird hearing it in that context because I've never heard it in that context outside of a black and white movie. And he said, uh, "Oh." And he farted and walked away. And you might think, well, that's all right. It's not because we were in a cupboard. And he then closed the door. I mean, cupboard, closet, <laughs> whatever. But um, it's like, oh, 
Why do people have to fart in closets and cupboards and tight spaces like lofts and underneath beds and things like that? Have you ever been under a bed and just like, just you just waiting, you know, you just, you're just under there for whatever reason and... <sighs> And you think, well, I'll, I'll surprise someone. You know, this is, this is a little joke. And, and then they come in and they get on a bed and you're just like, all they do is fart. i got nowhere to go with that. I don't, I don't know really why it's just... That even threw me off. Why would it be hundred? Why why would I be hiding under a bed of someone that just gets on and starts farting? What well, what context? What possible? What it just doesn't make sense. I mean, the last time I hid under a bed was probably when I was a kid. That at least that's what I'm sticking to. And I was. I mean, you see the size of me. You, you, you. I can't fit under beds. There's no bed I could fit under. Maybe a king's bed. I uh, literally cut an old-fashioned king's bed. It might be like five foot high or something. Maybe I could get under that. I don't know, but I couldn't get under a normal bed. It, I just wouldn't fit. I mean, to give you an idea of how fat I am. <laughs> Um, I'm five for eight when I'm taught that's that's like, why what, what's your height got to do anything well let me finish let me finish yeah but you're five for eight what's it got to do with your weight well if you let me finish then you understand what I'm saying it makes sense just you know let let just, just let me just talk yeah but you just keep going on about stuff and it's like None of it is really relevant. I mean, I'm still waiting to hear about this sleeping thing. And before that, what was you talking about? You were talking about... I don't even know what you were talking about. And then you start talking about shirts and gay shirts and old movies and and people in the garden. I mean, what, what, what were you talking about people in the garden for? What was that about? I don't know. This, this, this is what I was talking about. I don't know why. I don't, I don't have a, have an aunt swore for everything. Well, just, just kind of just stick to the point. I am sticking to the point, but you're distracting me. Can't you just get back? Just, just, just choose a subject and just stick to it. Which, ladies and gentlemen, and. Uh others I did do the boring sleepy boring objects podcasts where I did stick to the subject kind of I haven't done one for ages and ages I did quite a few I did support I think I did I did either 27 or 35 different recordings and they're pretty much just like this, but they're focused on one thing. And I keep coming back to that one thing. So I choose something like uh, haircuts. And I talk about haircuts I've had over the years. Of course, these days I just tend to just shave it off. Although I do have hair, you just can't see it. It's hidden. It's hidden under the skin. I do have hair. I just I shaved it all off, which I like to do every now and then. I'm I picked the wrong times to do it though because at the amount of times and I don't know why I shave it off on almost like the coldest day of the year, and then I realise why we have hair. It's not just to look sexy. Which of course, you know, obviously I do, but it's not. It's not the only reason to have hair. It's because it. It's a thermal thing. It's to keep us warm. And 
also it protects the, the scalp and everything as well mildly but the amount of heat that I mean I'm I, I wear a hat now I don't think I wore a hat until I shaved my head so I shaved my head off and I started wearing a hat because it was cold I could feel the cold I could feel the cold I mean that, that's kind of it really it sounded more dramatic as I started to say it but I could feel the cold it's almost like what am I going to do am I going to start like reciting or creating some magnificent new poem based on the cold and my bald slap head head uh, but nothing happened nothing came out I just got stuck with uh, yeah I could feel the cold That was kind of it. That was it, really. So, I, what else, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, so he said that about the shirt. I went through a period when, and I don't know why, because with my colouring, it's not a good idea. I was wearing white clothes. Because I'm pretty much red, I'm pink, I've got a pink face. I was wearing white clothes, so I looked. I look when I got my bald head. I look a bit like a devil baby. You can imagine that, like if you just like a little devil just giving birth. It's a. It's not a good. It's not a good description, really, is it, of myself? By the way, I'm available uh, if any women are out there, single, ideally desperate. Uh, I am. Because the thing is, in all reality, <laughs> you imagine waking up to this every day. Morning. <laughs> That's what you get. It's this that you can't. How could you? How could you not want that? How could you? Um, I have a cup of tea. I have a cup of tea. Well, yeah, that that's got to be an irresistible thing, really. I used to wear white clothes. I went through a period, it was 2004. I don't know why. I kind of know why. Kind of. It's, I went through a period. Actually, it wasn't just 2004. It was 2004, 2005, 2006. I started wearing nice clothes. I don't know why. Just started wearing nice clothes. Just nice-ish clothes. And I lost a fair bit of weight. Got very fit in 2004. I was doing Wing Chun Kung Fu. I was... I was doing weights. And I was active. Had a physical active job for the first seven months. Or eight months of the year. And I was a vegetarian. I didn't drink any alcohol for the whole of that year. I didn't do anything else. So that was particularly unhealthy. And I mean, at one point, right at the last three months of the year, I didn't even eat chocolate. Now, I don't eat chocolate now anymore because I had a wisdom tooth out a few weeks back and it caused so much kerfuffle I decided that's it no more chocolate now admittedly it it's not like the teeth got taken out and then the gap was waking me up you know at night feed me a Kit Kat a Mars bar a snicker feed me it wasn't that kind of situation 
wasn't waking me up. It was waking me up for different reasons. Um, none of them pleasant. It was very... It basically, they destroyed my mouth for a little while, the dentist did. Which sounds... You could take that different ways. But, like, in a dental-specific sp way, he um, destroyed my mouth. He... he because, you know, when they rip a tooth out, it hurt. It, it, it's, it's not, even with anaesthetic, obviously you need anaesthetic for that, but it's apparently the wisdom teeth are really deep, really big. And luckily I only had two wisdom teeth. And I think I've had them both out. Or oh, I've got one left. Oh. I don't know. I've got to figure it out. It's hard. So I'm trying to kind of figure out which two for. Uh, 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 uh. But then, uh, sorry, that's something you'll just see inside my mouth. I've now got two teeth missing there, two teeth missing there. It's terrible, really. I mean, oh, three teeth missing, but the ones at the back, so that did, well, did count. So five teeth. It's over like 20, 30, well, ever since I lost my little teeth and gained the big teeth, ever since then. But it's over quite a long period. It's not like suddenly, like in a week. Uh, although I had two teeth out. Um, I don't even remember which side it was, to be honest with you. Yeah, two teeth out. I think it was that side. Um, probably a few years back. And then ones was one at a time, and that was over probably 20 years. And that one was recently. So, yeah, it was... Um, it's not like suddenly a big issue. It's just... i got to start looking after them. i got to like, oh... And I love chocolate. I really do. I really, really, and I'm being really serious right now. I love chocolate. I do. I really love chocolate. Not all chocolate, but I do get a boost from chocolate. It gives me, I guess, it gives me a bit of a bit of a buzz, and not not like huge buzz, but. Oh, it's nice. I like chocolate, but I don't eat it anymore. Um, mind you, I do eat chip chop, chick chop chips, chick chips, cookies, chick chop chip, chip chop chip, or whatever. So they do have chocolate in them, the cookies, but I don't eat chocolate. Uh, like it as in chocolate. Like bars of chocolate or chocolate bars. Bars of chocolate. You know, bars of chocolate is something that's got full chocolate in, isn't it? And then uh, chocolate bars would be, I don't know, a Twix or Crunchy or Crunchy. See, Crunchy, that's one example of it just gets right in the teeth. It's like the, the chewy or oh, honeycomb nectar of love just gets really stuck. I'm doing that because that's my chin. The tooth's up there. And I remember once, that's when I had to think, had to have my tooth out before. I saw, I don't know where I was. I was somewhere. It might be in the pound shop or I don't know where, but I saw something I hadn't seen for a long time. I'm not talking about a naked woman. I'm talking about a curly whirly. 
something I hadn't seen. Because if I said, uh, you, you mean something you haven't seen for 30 years? No, I'm not talking about a woman. I'm talking about a curly whirly. I hadn't seen a curly whirly for quite a while. And they are one of my favourite chocolate sweet treats from when I was a kid. Crunchies, Maltesers, curly whirlies, well, anything, anything really. Um, I used to quite like bonbons, but the the ones with the is it icing sugar? Because you get different flavors. You get the and they'd be like toffee inside. So there'd be the white ones, which were I think vanilla. Then you get the pink ones, which were strawberry. Then you get the yellow ones, which I think were lemon. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, I'm trying to think. Did you see where to get mint ones? Well, that'd be green, wouldn't it? I don't know. I tell you what, I used to quite like, and there was these spaceship things, and they were, they were mint. They weren't like the. The, the spaceship with sherbet inside. That was a different thing. But these were, I don't know, like discs. And they were mint. They're very tasty. Toffos. I don't know if toffos are even a thing anymore. And there was these little, just basically just little toffees. It was nice. And you could, get, you could get, oh man, I don't know if they were like a different brand or just another version of the toffo. But you get ones with chocolate inside. Um, a little bit like chocolate eclairs. A little bit kind of but different. But softer versions of chocolate eclairs. Um, anyway, I got this curly whirly. I got a pack of them. I think there was five in a pack. Or four. Or six. There might have only been three. I'm trying to think. Three in a pack doesn't seem that many. Six seems too many. Five seems like a like a kind of a good number, but then I'm edging towards four. I don't know why. I mean, it's not not hugely relevant to the story, but I'm going to go with five. But then I'm thinking, okay, five if they were little, but these were quite big. Not as big as I remember, but then my hands were smaller back then. And my mouth, mouth, my mouth was the same size. Always had, this, always had the same size head. I was born with this head. I asked my mum, she'll tell you. She hasn't stopped talking about it. And, well, I say talking, screaming. And so I... I think it was five, maybe four. So these curly whirlies, if you don't know what curly whirlies are, you might not have them in your country. So, oh, he thinks he's talking to people in other countries. I thought he said he only had three people listen. Yeah, one in Australia, one in America, and one in England. Three different countries. So there. Mm, 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 mm. They look these kind of long, and they're covered in chocolate, but there's holes in them. It's kind of curly, kind of, it's, it's like almost like someone's got a, a, a bag of toffee and squeezed it, done like a curly thing, and then turned back and done a, a whirly thing. <laughs> oh, God, that's... That amuses me. They call curly whirlies. It's, it's just silly. But, and then they dried them out and they put chocolate, covered them in chocolate. And generally, you eat them and they're, they're a bit chewy and everything, but, you know, that's it. If it's in the winter, they're a little bit chewier. In the summer, they get soggy, like all chocolate, a bit soft. I think I bought them in the summer. These six or five or four curly whirlies. I remember the packet. It's really weird. It's a white packet. And you're going to think, why? You? I just remember because of what happened next. Just stick with me. 
it's gonna be this is what those youtube videos when they say stay to the end stay to the end oh you're gonna love the end it's all gonna be worth it at the end no it's not but just just for the sake of humor humor me um someone please i i yeah i remember the packet i mean the packet was pretty much like a large version of the packaging of the individual curly whirlies themselves it's just it was like a bigger version that makes sense yeah that's that's all um wider because it had to contain the the various different ones in there whether it was six or five i'm going towards five now i don't think it was four but i keep going back to four so i got home and i had one damn right i mean i was practically eating it as i was walking through the door it was like oh i was so excited it's a little bit you know when you go on a date with someone and you've you've liked maybe you've liked them for a long while and you go maybe it's not a date maybe you've gone to a uh you've been at a party or a christmas party or something or a works do or something and this person you've always got on with you've always always been really really uh good friends with in the office or where you work but you've always been attracted to them but you've never you kind of never done anything and you're always just like well I don't know what their situation is I don't know if they feel the same I mean you do you know that that situation and then you you end up going to this party together it's a works do maybe uh I don't know, funeral, wedding, whatever. But you go to this 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 thing, and you're both there together for the first time, um, and you find yourselves at the at the bar, or maybe you, you the seating arrangements has put you both together when you actually normally work in different offices. You see each other regularly, maybe once a day, maybe every two days. You might see each other uh, in the canteen or. You got your different set of friends, though. You got a different set of friends, and you kind of want to just go up to them and say hi. But generally, you you just only do that when you're alone with them. You talk to them, but when they're with their friends, you feel a little bit pushed out, maybe a little bit, a little bit separated. And then, so you go and you're sitting there, and he's read, "Oh, the seating arrangements have put us both together." And you see, and it says, oh, um, page. I don't know, it's page. And then page maybe walks up to the table, because no one's sat down yet. Everyone's mingling, you know. They don't want to just, you know, just walk into a, a Christmas party and just or a wedding or whatever and just sit down at the table. It's, it's nice to mingle, walk around, Um See who's got a better table. See who's closest to the toilet. Like, oh, I don't have to sit. They're sitting near a toilet. Ugh. And other people that would be happy with that. I mean, it's good to be near a toilet sometimes. You never know what the food's going to be like. So it's good to be prepared. And um, and maybe she, she, you've seen all oh, Paige. Paige is sitting there. And you see your... Because you know roughly where you're sitting. Someone said, oh, you're table five table five because you've got it maybe you've got a memo a memo's come through by email i mean unless it's before emails existed then it was the 80s 90s no 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 emails existed in the 90s didn't they i think or maybe they probably couldn't do if there was no internet i don't know anyway um and she's come along and so oh Juicy JJ. He's just getting excited, like, oh, we're, I hope it's the Juicy JJ I know. And um, I might be there. I'm not, okay, maybe it's, your name's Jason for the example of this. And you look, oh, Paige. 
Hope it's the page that I know. Whoa. <laughs> oh dear, this is silly. And um and you get on really well, you know, you just you used to see each other and maybe you both individually without knowing that each other are doing it have had like little fantasies of could there be something there could there be something more something deeper than just like having a laugh at the water fountain uh, or the waterfall or whatever wherever you get your drinks it, could there be is it just banter or is it just uh are you just whiling away the time because you're bored? Or is this so, is there a, a real connection there? Is is there something? And you maybe you both feel that way. You're like, I don't know. I, uh, I wonder if she likes me. That's my internal voice. I wonder if she is interested in me. I think about it sometimes. I'm not sure. But I wonder. Sometimes I sit in my chair and I ponder about the possibility of maybe one day holding her hand with her permission, of course, and maybe falling in love. And she might be thinking... Oh, no, not that, Jason. No, I don't know why. Why I can't. That's how she sounds. <laughs> it's like, oh, not that, Jason. Oh, that, that didn't sound good either, did it? Oh, not that, Jason. Um. Anyway, so you're both like, oh, we like each. Do they like each other? But don't know. Is it like, there's no, it's not like there's any, there's any, there's no no real signals like just it's very vague very vague so they get seated together and they meet each other they see each other oh good it's the, it is the person i think it is and they chat it's a little bit a little bit nervous to start with a little bit well this is weird because we've never been in this situation before there's normally no one else around when we chat and we talk about just talk about weird things and have a laugh. But now there's other people and some of them are listening. You can tell. You can tell. And the tables are quite close together. So there's people behind you as well. I'm not saying that they're necessarily like, you know, got a line ear trumpet right next to your mouth just so they can hear what you're saying. But an ear trumpet. <laughs> ear trumpet it's what people used to use for hearing aids it's like a big trumpet thing <laughs> oh dear I'm sorry I'm sorry and you hit it off they you know they both hit it off and And they, they, they it's, every, every, everything's really good. I don't know why I'm doing this story. It's, 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 <sighs> anyway, and you end up eating, you end up, mate, just, just having the time of your life, and you don't even, re <laughs> you don't even realise there's anyone else in the room, um, and. I don't know what it's it's romantic and you dance and then you and you go home and, and there's that moment where maybe one of you invites the other back to your place and everything feels right. It feels like this is what your whole life has been building up to. And you get to their front door and or they get to your front door and you open the open the front door and maybe your hand touches <laughs> I don't know 
why your hand would touch. Maybe your hand touches. And perhaps she's letting you into her home, but you don't realise, you forget it's her home, so you go to open the door yourself, forgetting that you don't live there. And your hands touch, I don't know how, and a spark, there's a spark comes off. And like, oh, and you look down, you both think the same thing, you look down, make sure there's no carpet. Not only that, make sure no one's rubbing their foot on the carpet. Because that could cause a spark. No loose wires anywhere. It's like, oh, this must be physical attraction. And you look at each other. And of course, it could be it could be same sex as well. I'm just using this as an example: man and woman. Um, it could be could be two penguins I mean it doesn't really matter and I'm not talking about the chocolate bars do you remember penguins penguins what happened I hated them I hated them then they come out with puffins which was another chocolate bar pretty much exactly the same just a knockoff of a penguin I wouldn't even consider a puffin but then I thought wait a minute I don't like penguins what if puffins become more popular than penguins? So I will eat a puffin in protest against the penguin chocolate bars because I don't like them. And then I realised it's the same thing. I think the problem is because they used to get melty, really melted quick. And they didn't, they couldn't hold. The texture didn't hold. It wasn't sustainable. It wasn't for a chocolate bar a chocolate bar needs to be firm I think I just spat then I get chocolate bar needs to be firm it needs it needs to be um, if it gets too melty it's a bit ugh, you know what I mean puffins so and you and you like you get that electric kind of like a little electric spark off of each other's hands and you realize that maybe maybe all of your dreams have come true in this moment everything you've ever wanted everything that you ever thought you wanted is kind of turned upside down and you realize that actually what you thought you wanted and what you really want right now. And what you thought you needed. And what you now know you do need. Has changed. And there's an intensity. There's an intensity that. Is growing. It's growing with every second. And. You look into each other's eyes and there's almost like everything. It's like you're more, almost kind of like melting into one, like one person. And nature takes its course and you just, you just lose control. And you're just kissing each other. And so you're trying to fumble through the door into the, you know, so you're opening and you're dropping the keys on the floor and you're bending over to pick the keys up. And you're having to like laugh because of what they're doing. And like, stop, stop, stop. We've got to get indoors. What about the neighbours? And you said, it doesn't matter about the neighbours. And and yeah, that's what you say. And they say, but no, but we're in my house. You know, your neighbours aren't going to notice it because we're not there. It's like, oh, yeah, that's true. It's like, oh, fair enough. And it's like, you manage to get the keys in the lock. And you open the door. And you get in. You, th you stumble into the door. The lights are off, so you have to turn the light on. I mean, that's not really relevant, but, you know, you turn the light on because it's, it's good to see because you don't want to trip. You don't want to be tripping over stuff, especially if you've not been in there before. It's good, you know. It's, it's different if you know the... Even if you know your, your way around, you know, it's still good to have the light on if you can, I would say. That's my advice. 
I, I broke my toe um, walking in the dark in my bedroom. Um, I f it's really weird. I forgot there was a weight bench in there. It takes up half the room. How did I forget it was there? <sighs> so, so you get into the door and you're just like losing all control. You're just so happy. And at last, um, it's like all your dreams have come true all at once. That's how I felt with the whirly, the curly whirly. The whirly curly? The curly whirly. Is I got in and like, Oh, it's been years. It wasn't really worth it, was it that? No, it wasn't worth the wait, never mind. And I hadn't had a curly whirly for so long. And it was because it was one of my favourite things to eat when I was a kid. As a sweet. But I ate it. And because it was summer, it was a bit soggy. It was a bit wet. It was a bit chocolate drippy, you know, a bit... Ugh. It was still tasted lovely. I'm not complaining, but it was a bit, you know, a bit, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't maintain its shape, it didn't maintain its nice shape, and it just was floppy, it was a bit, you know, so I thought, well, what can I do? So I put it in the fridge, but it's going to take ages, really, because it's, I want I want it now. I want another one now. And I think I had Andre at the time, so I think I gave him some of it because he was my little ferret and he liked a little bit of chocolate every now. I didn't give him a lot, just a tiny little bit of chocolate. He wasn't, um, he quite liked sweets and stuff. And I decided... I put the curly whirlies in the freezer. I came to the conclusion that maybe in the freezer is the best place for them. Because they would get colder quicker. There seemed to be some logic to that. Colder quicker. And the more I thought of it, I thought, yeah, that's what I need. I need colder quicker. The two C's. So, that's what I did. I put them in the freezer. I mean, I waited for them to get froze. I mean, I did. I wasn't expecting them to get frozen. I was gonna, I was gonna eat them after like half an hour or a night. I don't know, just let them get cold. But then something else happened. I can't remember what it was. It was just, I don't know. I think. Um, I think a spaceship crashed in the garden or something. I don't know. But and it, the, the aliens were trying to take over the town. But I got distracted. got distracted for a couple of hours. I went back to the to get the curly whirlies and they were frozen. But I thought, yeah, because it's cold. It's warm outside, brother. Um, this would be nice. It would be like having like an ice pop, ice lolly, whatever. So I was sucking it. So I'm kind of just like, you know, so I'm sort of in and out of my mouth. I'm just, I'm just sucking the end of it. And it was nice, but when I got something in my mouth, there's a ten. I just kind of want to bite. Not, not everything, but just generally, because I'm used to food, you know, eating stuff. and So I'm sucking on this thing. And to be fair, it's because if it was like more circular rather than it's kind of quite flat, it's quite a flat um, end, or well, it's quite flat altogether. So it didn't feel particularly um, comfortable on my tongue wasn't quite as smooth as something that was a bit rounder like an ice lolly or something I want those uh, milk pops milk milky milk milky milky things and I thought I don't want to bite it but I do so I thought yeah and the good thing about if you bite 
um, if you bite into a curly whirly normally it's very chewy and it's just like it's chewy. but if you if you bite into a frozen one it chips off it just you know and you can hear it go you can hear the break well that's what I did bit into it I could hear the crack I could hear the crack of it I didn't realise I was hearing the crack of my tooth I cracked my tooth open literally it like was in half with this frozen thing um, I mean to be fair that wasn't really worth the wait was it that was the ending I was talking about um, no it wasn't I do I apologise it wasn't worth the wait it wasn't really wasn't the finale it's a little bit like you know when you watch a movie and like so you're really enjoying it and then it just patters out to nothing I'm not saying that this was a, like a good movie because obviously it really wasn't but um, but the ending is just a bit ugh, you know a bit really really is that it? Is that is that really how you're going to end a uh, hundred million dollar movie that you spent a hundred million dollars? Can you maybe have spent a couple of thousand pound on you know a little bit of like get together to make it a little bit of a better ending? <laughs> maybe, maybe, huh? Hey, hey, hey. So. Yeah, that was the end, and that was I just basically the tooth broke in half, so I had to go and I ended up having it removed. Yeah, so I've never, I've not had a curly whirly since. I haven't had a curly whirly since, and I don't know what to do. <sighs> so yeah, that was it. Um. Considering I didn't want to make a recording, I've done all right. And I didn't want to, it wasn't I didn't want to make one. I was just in it. I was in a grump earlier on. I was a proper grump, really moody, really. And I wasn't sure why. Really, I wasn't really. I don't know. because I, I, you know, I don't. I don't always know why. So hey, now someone's in the garden kicking stuff around. So I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Remember to be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye.